in order to fully appreciate what Maggie McNeil and the other Canadian swimmers have done this weekend, we've, ad we've assembled a panel. This is amazing. We have Donna Moskal, who is the general manager of the London Aquatic Club. We have Liz Moskal, who is the head age group coach. And we have Andrew Craven, who is the head coach. And all three of you, you didn't have to stay up too, too late. But uh, I imagine the adrenaline kept you up a lot longer we're able to watch Maggie McNeil win gold in Tokyo last night in the 100 meter butterfly in close race. Andrew, help us out from a swimming perspective. How close was this race? Uh, Mike, as, as close as it gets, you know, three 100s between gold and silver and 14 100s between first and fourth. And this is this is the Olympic Games. You know, this is, you know, everybody who goes there, they are clearly a world-class athlete and when those eight women stepped up onto the blocks you know they've all done pretty much the same preparation even in these disjointed times of preparation in the last 16 months so credit to all of them and obviously special credit to Maggie but yeah you know you just uh, it comes down to and we've heard it you know several times already it comes down to the details and Liz and Donna and I always say to our swimmers from the youngest to the oldest, you know, when you get to your critical moment, to the championship moment, it's not about rising to the occasion. It's about falling back on your training. And Maggie, because of the focus, the incredible focus and attention to detail that she exhibited from the, you know, virtually from the very first day she stepped onto our pool deck at eight years old, because of, because of that, that discipline that she had in her training and, and I'm sure continues to have, you know, at the University of Michigan at the High Performance Center in Toronto. Because of that training, she uh, she got what for us, quite frankly, while it was an exciting result, uh, and you should have seen us last night, it was not an unexpected result. You know, there's always a there's always a little bit of a shadow of doubt when you're at that level, but we were certainly not surprised that Maggie did what she did. Well, Donna, let's talk about what was happening while Maggie was racing. It would be one thing for everybody to be connected at the London Aquatic Club, all on their phones. Hey, did you see that? Can you believe this? Instead, you were all able to be pandemically friendly together at a drive-in. Tell us about what that was like to be there. Well, it was very exciting. There was a lot of horn honking and there was a lot of yelling and there was a lot of screaming and a lot of cheering and a lot of jumping and I mean, while we were all wearing our masks and we were all staying within our spots, we really felt like we were together. There was a big community out there and it was just so exciting. And I mean, it was such a great experience for all of our swimmers to be part of it and to all be together. And after the tough year we've had, it was such a great celebration. Well, nothing like celebrating a gold medal. We are talking with Donna Moskal, general manager of London Aquatic Club, Andrew Craven, who is the head coach, and Liz Moskal, who is the head age group coach. Liz, can you help us to understand Maggie McNeil winning gold in lane seven? Is there something that she would have had to overcome? Is there a disadvantage to swimming that far outside in a 100 meter race? You always want to be in one of those middle lanes. When they set it up, they set it up in a bit of a V formation. So there's a bit of a wake that comes out to the edge of the pool and it can get a bit of bounce back and get a little rougher on the outside lane. So for Maggie to dive in and do what she did at a lane seven was just amazing, but it just shows the amount of determination that she has. Just incredible. And if I can say on that too, Mike, like, you know, Liz and Donna and I have, have seen, uh, you know, throughout Maggie's rise, you know, through the club and through the, the, re the provincial and, and then junior national and national level, like she's, Several times she has won races that perhaps she wasn't expected to win from lane seven or, you know, lane two or even lane one uh, sometimes. So, yeah, I, I, my observation on that has been that it might have been actually an advantage for her to be in lane seven. She, she has admitted that her, her semifinal swim wasn't her greatest swim. She wasn't happy with that. You know, she was more nervous for that race than she was for the final. She told me, she, like last, she said last night she was, or, well, for her race in the final, she was more relaxed. And I think because she was in lane seven, you know, she didn't have the spotlight of being in the fastest lanes as Liz described, lane four, lane five, lane three. Those, those are where the favorites are situated for the final. But Maggie was over there in lane seven, just kind of doing her own thing. And I think she probably felt a little bit more relaxed out there. 
Andrew, how about the second half of her race? We hear that she turns so well on the wall. What is it that she's doing so well that gives her that real push in the last 50 meters? Well, yeah, you mentioned it, Mike. She's got, she's got that, uh, you know, so the turn involves actually coming into the wall and, and turning around, getting off the wall. So she's good at that. I wouldn't say she's the best in the world uh, in terms of the wall part of her turn, but it's the underwater segment that clearly she is, well, I guess we can say now the best in the world at. Um, so, you know, when she was young and, and was, was just starting out and, and we as coaches have always emphasized to your swimmers, once it became clear that doing the underwater dolphin kicks was a really valuable skill to develop and nurture, uh, you know, for our youngest swimmers, we're always telling them to try and take three underwater dolphin kicks off every push off the wall. And, you know, Maggie always did what her coaches told her and she started at three kicks and now she does 10. And the trick is, the, the key is, you know, we tell our swimmers, okay, you know, you know, do, well, we're, we're talking to our older swimmers about doing six kicks. So, you know, a lot of them will do six kicks and, and sure, that's fine. But Maggie's key is, well, we talk about, you know, you want to go as far as you can underwater, as fast as you can. So that's great if you can go the whole 15 meters underwater, but if you're not doing it fast, it doesn't, it doesn't really, you know, amount to much. So Maggie's trick is that she takes those 10 kicks and every single one of them is done with the maximum amount of power and she is able to maintain her streamline so so well better than better than most and so yeah that's that's her that's well it's not her secret weapon anymore but it's her biggest weapon and her ability to close out the race because of that you know that that toughness and that killer instinct she have she you know her second 50 split was five tenths faster than anybody else in the field i think at 29.09 and you know she's always wanted to finish her 100 meter butterfly in uh in under 29 seconds. So she was, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't much to be upset about with that race last night, but she, you know, that's one thing that she's going to con continue to try and improve on to try and bring that second 50 home in less than 29 seconds. So yeah, she, uh, she's, you know, we all know now she's gonna, you know, you, you better be way ahead of her on that first wall if you hope to have a chance to win at the end. Andrew Craven joining us, head coach of the London Aquatic Club. Donna Moskal with us, general manager at the London Aquatic Club, and Liz Moskal, the youth ages head coach. Donna, one thing that Maggie mentioned after the race was that she didn't breathe going into the end, and that was something she was working on right before the finish. She didn't breathe. Uh, for anybody who hasn't done a lot of swimming, what does that mean? It means you're a lot faster and you touch the wall faster than the person beside you. So we have a saying in our club that we try to use with our swimmers and it's flags in face in. So once they pass that last fit, set of flags going into the wall, the face goes into the water and you try to finish your race as tough as you can. So glad to know that she took it with her and, and that was still with her when she went to the race yesterday because we were certainly proud of her as London swimmers. Wow. Liz, to finish off, the young kids being able to watch this. What is that going to mean for them? How big is this for other swimmers of the London Aquatic Club? Well, having 100 cars, I'd say we probably had about 200 swimmers there watching her last night, not to mention all the ones at home. Uh, it's a huge drive, and it, it's going to push swimming all across Canada to raise the bar for everyone else. And we had six new inquiries last night as our registrar drove home from the drive-in. So get ready to see more great swimming in the London area for sure. Well, get ready to see more at the Olympics as well. Maggie still has a relay left and I wanna get your thoughts on this, maybe a little bit from each of you. How much of an all-star team is it to think that Kylie Mass and Penny Alexiak and Maggie McNeil are three fourths of a relay team that will be going through a, a medley. Uh, Andrew, how big is that? Yeah, no, it's a great, great point, Mike. And, and you know, the reality is the Canadian women's 4x100 medley relay is now comprised of two Olympic gold medalists, a two-time world champion. So I'm sure these ladies are, you know, you get to a level like that. Sometimes you wonder, you know, am, am I worthy? Do I, you know, do I deserve to be here? But I'm sure these ladies are looking at each other now and going, 
you guys, let's go. Let's have fun. We are the best in the world. We can do this. Wow. How excited are you, Donna, to watch what happens next? Oh, I can hardly wait. I think that we're going to see great things from these ladies. I think that, you know, once you start winning medals, um, the momentum just keeps it going. That's it. And Liz, who knows what is to come? We'll see how many other Canadian swimmers we have, you know, Summer, who's 14, who's at the Olympics now. We'll, we'll see what happens beyond that. So good luck with everybody who is still to come out of the London Aquatic Club. This is amazing. There are always great things coming up the ranks. So keep your eyes peeled. Can't wait. Thanks so much for doing this and enjoy the rest of the games. Thanks, Mike. Congratulations, coaches.